Adrena Partridge's laptop. Adrena Partridge, I guess. She was in some reality show called The Hills. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was also wearing one of Orlando Bloom's purloined Rolexes. <laughs> Well, I let him keep the watch. I took the laptop. I ran it into the hotel. I went to the concierge. I said, listen, an attorney in Vegas is going to pick this up later. And uh, the concierge took the laptop. And I followed Johnny Dangerous back towards Los Angeles. So we rolled out. I think that at this point, Johnny Dangerous was resigned to his fate. He was uh, motivated by a sermon I gave him about how he'd wind up doing less than two years for the receiving stolen goods and gun charges he was facing. I mean, he'd done it before, so he could do it standing on his head this time, right? And I pointed out, (laughs) I pointed out the fact that he'd be a rock star in prison when his fellow inmates saw him on the cover of Maxim magazine. Pro tip. Maxim press is good press in the joint. So he allowed me to ride shotgun to his last days before he turned himself in. You know, the guy had homies. He had to pour beers out with them. You know, it's not like someone died, but I guess it's the same thing when you're going to prison. You're with your homies, and they pour a beer out for you. Oh, Jesus, I, I, I really had to bite my tongue from busting up laughing. It was it was hilarious. It was hilarious hanging out with him and his crew of fellow ex-cons reminiscing on their life together outside of the law. Badasses? Not really. But... This was his last freedom ride, not mine. I should also mention that the dude was popping Oxycontin like candy, so his judgment was just a tad off, to say the least. So, Johnny, what else did they want to do? Well, Johnny and one of his closer homies wanted tattoos from a specific artist uh, from Shamrock Tattoo Shop in Hollywood. Heard of it? Shamrock Social Club on Sunset, yeah. Legendary. So I arranged for this artist to come to where I was living in Los Feliz at the time. We'd have a tattoo party. What the hell? Turns out Johnny was currently banging fellow bling ringer Courtney Ames, and uh, he brought her along for this, his last ride on the outside (laughs) so she's in my house she's nodding off on oxys uh, right there on my couch while the tattoo artist engraves dueling pistols onto johnny and his pal's hips i suppose this ink of their choice antique pistols etched onto their hips was either a way to sort of enhance their outlaw image or some sort of on the down low gay mating ritual i don't know whatever it was all so much fun to watch so after the tattoo party i booked a room in a flea bag hotel in the bowels of hollywood over on yucca for this lovebird jailbird couple that would be johnny and courtney ames you know, to spend one last night together. So I let them into their hotel room and I posted up outside the room all night long until they came out all sweaty at dawn. Dawn is ugly in this part of Hollywood, (laughs) man. He put her in a cab and I followed him to his attorney's office in the valley where Johnny passed a fat envelope of cash across a conference room table. It was like $5,000 retainer, as I recall. They jumped into his car, and I tailed them to the Hollywood precinct where Mr. Clean, remember him, Officer Goodkin, puts the cuffs on him. TMZ was there. Johnny Dangerous! Johnny Dangerous! Man, I fucking hate TMZ. I asked one of their correspondents if he even knew how to spell journalism. (laughs) He threatened to beat me up as Johnny Dangerous was led into the precinct to be booked. Ooh, TMZ, I'm scared. 
The next day, Officer Goodkin calls me into the precinct. Curious, I showed up. And the motherfucker, he backroomed me. Do you know what that means? He backroomed me. Getting backroomed in a police station is something a journalist never, ever wants to happen. I've had it done twice. Once in Thailand and once right then and there in Hollywood. He leads me into an interrogation room where the door locks and stays locked behind him. He gives me the cold, probing, intimidating stare for about 30 seconds. And then he gets up and he leaves the room. So I'm sitting there twiddling my thumbs. Goodkin comes back in and fuming. He leans into me menacingly. Look, Ebner, I just want you to know that we were only a couple hours behind you in Vegas. I was like, cool. I think I smiled, knowing that was all he had. And yes, I had successfully not only scooped the LAPD, I had done their fucking job for them with some roadside attractions along the way. Meantime, Johnny Dangerous had been remanded to county jail where he was uh, tossed in with the worst of the worst while awaiting sentencing on his imminent guilty plea. My phone rings. Ebner, it's Johnny. Uh, What's up, man? Man, you told me I was going to be a rock star in jail. I just got my fucking ass kicked in here. I'm thinking, well, of course you did. That's what happens to fat white boys in county jail. But I was more like, "Mm, sorry, pal. Keep your head up. See ya. Would not want to be ya. And about Johnny's loyalty among thieves ethos, almost as soon as he was sentenced to a couple of digits in state prison, I get a call from one of his closest homies. You know, one of the guys he was pouring beers out with only months earlier. Offering me. uh, Actually, how should I put this? He was offering to sell me a sex tape of Johnny Dangerous and his girlfriend, the aforementioned Courtney Ames. No thanks. I heard all those grunts and groans already when I posted up outside his hotel room that night. I didn't need to see the details. So, all these years have passed with Johnny Dangerous out of sight and out of mind. I think he got busted in Idaho. I I really wasn't paying attention to my detriment. Out of sight, out of mind? Well, that was until I walked out of that Persian restaurant last week, and he reappears into my life. There you are. I had been checking my phone, so my glasses were perched on my head as I turned around. I pulled them down to get a view of the character behind the voice. Yeah, it was Johnny Dangerous. Even with the beard, I'd know that face anywhere. He was moving towards me hands in his hoodie pockets. This stretch of Hill Street was practically deserted, so any cries for help wouldn't really help my situation. And when he got within spitting distance, or shooting distance, as I told you, he had his hands in his pockets, I extended my hand, you know, that straight arm technique, and I said, oh no, oh no, man. And I spun on my heel, And I ran my 58-year-old ass across Hill Street with him yelling, You fucking pussy! He was right behind me. I rounded a corner. I darted into the lobby of a hotel on 9th Street. And then I cut through their underground parking lot to an exit on Olympic where I hailed a yellow cab back to my parking lot. I jumped in my car and I hightailed it out of there. Oh, man, it was a close one. Now it comes to mind, what do you think? Do you think he was tracking me on social media and he saw that check-in? Or was he just homeless and happened to run into me on Hill Street? David, what do you think? I, You know, I would go with option A. Seems the more reasonable, you know, 
Uh, and and from from the story you tell, it doesn't sound like he was that surprised right. when and he saw exactly. you. Exactly. Know? And the, uh, let me tell you something that makes me feel as stupid as the bling ring using social media the way they did. And, you know, setting up a trap for myself. Never again, never again, I tell you. Where are they now? The bling ring. Anyway, uh, Alexis Nyers. She pleaded no contest in 2010 to robbing Orlando Bloom's house and later served 30 days of a 180-day prison sentence. After kicking a drug addiction, Nyers, 21, uh, well, she's probably about 22 now, she's now sober, and uh, a couple of Aprils ago, she gave birth to her first child, Harper. Mazel tov. Yes, last, uh, a couple of years ago, she married a 38-year-old Canadian businessman named Evan Hames, who she met while, shocker, the two were attending Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. Haynes owns two sober living facilities in Malibu, and Nyers says she often stops in, sharing stories from her past with patients. Okay, so Nick Prugo, the guy who ratted Johnny Dangerous out, and he was fashioned himself as some sort of ringleader of the bling ring. Nick Prugo was sentenced to two years in state prison. But he was released within days as his sentence was cut in half for good behavior and work credits since he had already served some time behind bars when he failed to post bail. Which is weird because Prugo's father was some sort of entertainment exec and could have easily posted bail for his son. Not this time. So Prugo's now, uh, I don't know, 23 years old. He gets a bunch of interview requests, as according to him, but he's not talking. Then there's the most mysterious member of the bling ring. It's Rachel Lee, long believed to be the real ringleader of the crime spree. In 2011, she was sentenced to four years in prison after pleading no contest to burglarizing the Hollywood home of Audrina Patridge at the time of... Uh, she was a re- reality star on, as I said, MTV's The Hills. In prison, Lee was allowed to work in a special program known as Fire Camp, where she and other inmates trained to help suppress fires and help after emergencies like floods or earthquakes. She's like 23, 24 years old now. She was uh, released on parole about a year and a half ago. After serving roughly one year and four months, she's not talking to the press either. Tess Taylor, she was another one. She was Alexis Nyer's best friend. The two were so close, they referred to one another as sisters. And Taylor uh, even lived with the Nyer's family in high school. Taylor now, 22, 23 years old, was never charged as being part of the bling ring, but she still turned up as depicted in Sofia Coppola's movie of the same name. She's not talking to the press either. And Courtney Ames. Uh, That was Johnny Dangerous's main squeeze. Well, Courtney Ames was sentenced to three years probation and 60 days of community service. Ames is now 23 or 24. She doesn't want to be interviewed She wants to, quote, unquote, avoid the spotlight. And according to her lawyer, Robert Schwartz, she is currently a student at Pierce College in Woodland Hills, California, where she is taking classes in psychology, speech, and child development. Uh, And apparently, back uh, back when she was matriculating at Pierce College, she received straight A's in all of her classes. Congratulations, Courtney Ames. And finally, there was one other guy. He was a a co-fence, if you will, with Johnny Dangerous. His name was Roy Lopez Jr. He pled out on one count of receiving stolen property from Paris Hilton's home, and uh, he moved to Texas in an effort to restart his life Uh, He's apparently working on an oil field job. He's a roughneck, a gig that keeps him occupied about 70 hours a week or more. 
And uh, that's what Roy Lopez is doing. Uh, Diana Tamayo, another one.